Good afternoon. This is Creative Solutions in Caregiving. Witting and inspiring, that's what people say about Brita Miller. Brita is a speaker who engages, entertains, and inspires audiences who are stuck in the sandwich generation. A successful executive, mother of three, two with special needs, children, and caregiver to her frail mother, including hospice care. Brita has an ability to find humor in the most unlikely places and to use it as an extraordinary coping tool. Please welcome Brita Miller. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cindy. I am, I am delighted to be here today for many, many reasons. Um, one thing I want to say is that you never know when wisdom can come into your life. Um, my son, who is cognitively impaired, said to me, he's 21, he said, I told him where I was going, and he says, well, ha have a good time in my city. And I said, okay, you were born in Korea, you've never been to Indiana, your city, and I'm not getting it. He says, yeah, my city. His name is Evan. <laughs> never occurred to me. And he was so excited, so I'm going to have to make sure I pick up an Evansville t-shirt somewhere before I go back to Michigan. Um, but I, I truly am honored to be here today. I was so impressed with Tipa. How many were here this morning to hear Tipa Snow speak? What a delight she is. And I want to let you know you're safe. I'm not going to be grabbing you. I'm not going to be <laughs> pulling you in. But we're going to talk about a lot of different things. And I hope that you can see. I asked you not to sit in the back just because I have some visual aids and some things here. They're not very large. And I want to hold them up. And I'd like to share them with you. So if you want to move in a bit closer, it's perfectly safe. I promise. Anyway. Um, the reason that I'm here today is that I have spent a lifetime doing a lot of different things. And for eight years, I cared for my mother. And I learned an awful lot, a lot of things. I have to tell you, I admire all of you for being here. And I wish that during my years as a family caregiver, I knew about such a thing, such a support group, so much knowledge that could be shared. Because I think it's, it's very isolating when you are a caregiver for a family caregiver with no professional expertise, um, you kind of have to figure it out by yourself. And it can be very isolating. So kudos to the organizers of the event and for all of you for attending. But before we begin, I guess I'd like to kind of get a sense of who is here today. Um, how many of you, apart from your professional work as caregivers, um, are family caregivers? Anybody here? Raise your hand. OK. How many of you have children at home? How many have uh, boomerang kids? They went away and they came back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll talk about that more in, uh, in, in my keynote presentation, which will be following this. So there'll be a little bit, and, and I'm going to have to ask you to really use your imagination. Typically, this workshop follows my keynote when you hear stories and you hear about lots of detail about things that I've done. And, and we get into some specific ideas here. I hope that you'll join me for that as well. So you'll just know a little bit more. So just in your head, just pretend you've already heard all that and you get it. So you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Um, what are some of the issues and challenges that you as a, as a caregiver, either within caring for your own family members or as a professional that you see other family, families deal with? I'd like to write them down here on the board and in fact, what I have is uh, at the end of each aisle, if you're up for it, because we, with the, the setting here, it's kind of hard to do some group work. I'm going to take notes up here. If you have notes of ideas that you see that happen in, your, you know, in this room today, then I'm asking you to put your email address on here, and I will compile all this and send it to you. So you don't have to worry about writing it down. or And then if I'm able to expand on it or give you some links or some other ideas, I'm happy to do that. So that's the purpose for those lists that are at the end of the table. But right now, I will be your scribe, and I'll write this down. So what are some ideas, uh, not ideas, some challenges or problems that you face, either as a family caregiver or that you see other families face? Anybody? Just raise your hand and shout it out. Yes. Resentment. And when you say resentment in terms of, you know, that's an attitudinal problem, right? Anger, yeah. Okay. Anger okay, anger. How about more um, 
then how do those relate to activities or things you need to accomplish, things that you need to do? Yes? Multiple obligations at the same time. Can we say an amen to that, right? Okay, multiple. So time management. You know, anybody read the Harry Potter books? You know, when they had the flu powder and you could just go in different places? I wanted some of that so many times. So multiple obligations. Okay, what else? Unwillingness to accept help. Either a caregiver unwilling or a patient or a family member, right? Yeah, unwillingness, stubborn and contrary, that kind of thing, yeah. Unwillingness to accept help. Okay, this is good. Anything else? Frustration. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Unrealistic demands for help. Okay. You mean you're not a superman or woman? Can't do that. Unrealistic demands. Gosh, I hope I have spell check on this board. That's <laughs> what happens when we write quickly, right? Yes. Family dysfunction. And did I hear denial as well? And we're not talking about Cleopatra, right? Not the queen of denial. Yeah, that was me for a while. <laughs> Family dysfunction. Boy, this looks like a fun fest up here, doesn't it? And denial. Yeah. In my keynote, that's a key word, actually, that I use. Yes? Guilt? Oh, yes. Pack your bags. We're going on a guilt trip. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm exhausted just from reading that. Yes? Role reversal. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, that, that plays a really big part. You know, that whole parent-child dynamic, whew, it's tough. It's tough. So when we talk about these, all of these challenges, one of the, the first things that I think about that before you can be creative, before you can come up with solutions to care for someone else, we have to take care of ourselves, right? And aren't we bad at that? I think so. I think that we get burned out. We are so accustomed to being caregivers that it's really hard to, to give ourselves permission to take care of ourselves. So when you think about caring for yourself, self-care, there's three areas I think of, and that is physical, mental, and spiritual. The first thing, I think, is to give yourself permission to do this and not feel guilty about doing it or not feeling, oh, but I have to be taking care of mom. Oh, that's selfish. I can't go to exercise class or I can't go out to a movie, for goodness sake. I need to be here because no one else could do it the way I do it, right? So what are some um, physical things, inexpensive, quick, short things that you might commit to do for yourself and there's three th ways I look at this. There's things that you could be doing, things you should be doing, and then things you really wish that you could do. So any thoughts about physical things that you could be doing? Anybody? Yes? Grocery shopping. Grocery shopping. Just having stuff in the house. Then you don't have that stress about what to make for dinner, and the cupboards are bare. Just get away from Yep. OK, just get away. Whatever that might be, and for some people, that's a glamour trip, right? Going to the, going to the grocery store, OK? Just taking care of business. One of the things that I used to do, and I totally gave myself permission, one of my high skill level things is a snap, a short nap. And it was essential for me. And I used to feel really guilty, like, I'm so lazy, I can't believe. But I would just feel myself winding down like this. One time, my, my eight-year-old daughter looked at me and said, Mom, I think you need a nap. <laughs> she was right. She was right. So grocery shopping, what are some other physical things you could do? Taking a nap is one of them. Take a walk, absolutely. So some light exercise. The speaker right before me, 
that Tai Chi, that sounds like a really good thing to do, the yoga. Apart from the study of it, just the physical idea of going somewhere, having an appointment to go somewhere to take care of yourself. One of the things that I did when I was caring for my mom was I went and got a massage because I felt like I would get knives in the back of my neck. I had never been one to go to a massage. But for 15 minutes, and I remember the massage therapist saying to me, you're a little stressed, aren't you? <laughs> Can you tell? <laughs> and it was amazing to me. I, I knew I was having rough weeks there when I was going twice a week, but you know, that's another story. But about once a month, if you could go and just have a 15, 20-minute massage on the back of your neck, your shoulders, it's amazing what it will do for your physical state and your mental state in terms of, of really taking care of yourself. Mental, mind games. This is a big one. I like to think of myself as a master of the mind game. My father was what I would call a crusty cupcake. And to the world, he was a cranky son of a gun. He could find a negative response to just about anything in the world. And it, for a long time, it bothered me. It would be like, oh, no matter what happened, he would find the downside. He would find, anybody have anyone they know like that? Yeah, they're just, they wear you out, don't they? They're just so negative. So I decided, in my head, I would say, I would play dad negative bingo. And one day, well, there was a period of time many, many years ago, my parents were doing some home improvements. They wanted to get new windows in the house. So, of course, there was a big argument. And my mother wanted to get the little Munton bars in all the windows. And my dad did not want that. He just wanted the plain glass. And they went back and forth and back and forth. Well, of course my mother won. Of course we got the Munton bars in the house. So when they were installed, I came over for a visit. And I just said, wow, Dad, the windows look so beautiful. Aren't you happy with them? And he sat in his chair and he said, you know what they look like from the inside, don't you? And I waited. Prison bars. OK. But in my head, I didn't get cranky. I didn't get upset. I thought, that's a new record. I think that's 30 seconds. I walked in the door, and he went right to something really negative right away. And so instead of getting upset and disappointed that he wasn't behaving the way I hoped he would or the way I wanted him to, I changed my head. Did he know that I was playing a game in my head to see how quickly he was going to get cranky or ornery about something? Of course not. But it helped me. And then I just got a little smile in the corner of my mouth and said, and I got it. Um, spiritual. For, for many people, prayer and support of their faith, their faith community, um, even just having a group of people together, certainly like this, this is, this is high level support though, but other people that have been in similar circumstances. As we age, we're finding out more and more people are involved in, in these challenges of caregiving. So it won't be as difficult, but it's amazing. When I tell people what I talk about and what I do, oh, I have to tell you a story about my, my mother. Oh yeah, I've been in the same situation. And it's incredible how people feel so alone and so isolated. So the support of others, I don't want to call it misery loves company, but sometimes it is. Sometimes it is. So if you can, what happened to my little remote here? If you can imagine, I am woman, I am strong, and I am so tired. Is this truth? I think we need to get this on a t-shirt. How do you charge your battery? So what are some ways that, uh, that maybe you have, that you have uh, thought of that help you recharge your batteries? Anybody have any suggestions? Apart from going, a walk, going for a walk is good. Grocery shopping, God bless you. I would never think of that as a way to charge my batteries. But if it does it for you, who am I to judge? Well, I am, but it's OK. <laughs> Anybody else? What are some ideas that, that you do to charge your batteries when you need a timeout? I'm sorry, what? Lunch with, girlfriends. Lunch with girlfriends, absolutely. Lunch. Now, if your husband is having lunch with girlfriends, that's a bad thing, OK? <laughs> but so how about if we just say lunch with friends, that's safer? Is that OK? OK. We want to be clear. I'm not encouraging bad behavior. OK. Anything else? Yes? Going to an amusement park. I'm the one to hold the purse. 
Don't make me go on the roller coaster. I've never had a panic attack in my life, thank God. I know that it's, it's a very common thing. But the closest I ever got to feeling it was going to an amusement park years ago, strapped into the roller coaster, click, 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 up to the top. There was a ladder. I seriously thought about take, getting, lifting the bar up and climbing down the ladder. I was so terrified. Never again. So you can go. Don't make me go. <laughs> Everybody has their own thing. So amusement park. Although I think sometimes caring for elderly parents is a roller coaster, right? <laughs> Not a good one. How about any other ideas for how you might charge your batteries? What do you do? Shopping. Retail therapy. Love it. Love it. Absolutely. Shopping. OK. What else? Music therapy, yep. Mm -hmm. Bubble bath, yes, was there more about that? No, lock on the door, though, is a good thing, right? Yep. We're remodeling our bathroom at our house, and I'm really excited because we're going to get a clawfoot tub, and I can't wait, and I've already told my husband, we're putting the lock on the door, and anybody who's ever, where is mom? She's in the bathroom. That'll just be the standard thing. I'll just be in there just soaking my life away. But I'm excited about it. So a bubble bath. Remember those commercials from a million years ago, Calgon, take me away? Take me anywhere. What are there some ideas that you, uh, that you do to, to charge your batteries? Weekend away. Weekend away, exactly. Anywhere. Yep. I live uh, near Ann Arbor, Michigan, and um, yeah, we're going to go south for the weekend. <laughs> Toledo, <but> it's okay. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> um, any, other, uh, any other thoughts about what you might do? How about going to the movies? Although it's pretty hard to find movies that are, that are really, that, you, that are worth, what, 10 bucks to go see, but maybe you could, one of the things that I would do, I would go to the library. Now, just going to the library itself, when I was in the thick of it, was a break. And it was free, and it was something you could do. But you can get DVDs there that are incredible. So one of the things that I did was I chose DVDs I wanted to see. It wasn't about, oh, mom would like this one. Oh, yeah, I should get this one. The kids would like this one. Oh, I think my husband would like to watch this. No, I just gave myself permission to get DVDs that I wanted to see, because it was hard for me to leave for long periods of time. So I would just go in, the, go in another room or on a laptop and watch a DVD and take a two-hour break in, in some silly movie that I wanted to see. So, uh, so movies can be a great release. OK. Just any, any other ideas? What do you do to charge your batteries? Massage. Massage, yes. In fact, maybe we should get some people in here today. Wouldn't that be nice? Just have little chairs set up in the corner. Be a long line, yeah. Meditate. Okay, let's just finish up this little box here. One more idea? Read, okay. Very good. So these are a lot of very singular activities that you could do, but you know what I love about them? Except for the shopping, because you could do a lot of damage there, it doesn't take a lot of money to do most of these things. But I think you need to make the conscious effort to really do it. Look familiar? Because the point is, is that you can't be creative if you are spent. If you are exhausted and wiped out, what do you become? Cranky, short-tempered, right? Not very patient. And certainly, you don't have the joy that Tipa spoke about this morning if you are too exhausted to even extend any, any creative ideas. So on the end of the table here, there, there is the sheet that has on one side, there's all the lines for emails. On the other side, it's just blank, because I just didn't want to contain you. I didn't want to say you had to fit it into a line or a drawing or anything like that. If you want to think of something, write it, pass it down. Um, if, if, if we can use our cumulative wisdom here. I'll be glad to compile all these ideas and then send them out to you in an email in the next few days. 
So you think about what do you do now? Do you do all these things? Do you think you should do any of these things or other things? And what do you wish you could do? And I, my suggestion to you is to find a way to do those things, to give yourself permission to do them at least, at least once a week to make an appointment with yourself to do this. One of the things that I did, I've always been, I've done a lot of acting, I've been in a lot of shows, and community theater was a great thing for me. Now, even if you're not interested in being an actor, community theater is in almost every community across the country. You can volunteer to work on the stage, behind the set, um, getting props or costumes or anything. But here's what's interesting about it. It's a short-term commitment. It's usually six or eight weeks. And you become a family. There is, you have to go to rehearsals. And it was the greatest thing in the world because I had an office in my home, so I had the worst of both worlds. I never got to leave. And I would get everything set up, and then I'd say, I got a rehearsal tonight, got to go. And it was an appointment two or three nights a week that I would go for a few hours, and I would do something just for fun, just for me. It had nothing to do with taking care of anybody else, nothing to do with enhancing our home or, or doing anything um, that was for anybody but, but for my own personal enjoyment. And the supportive group of being in, in a theater family for, as I say, it only lasts six or eight weeks. The show's over, boom, everybody is done. But it's a great thing to do. It doesn't cost anything to, uh, to be a part of it. And uh, it's, it's just an idea for you to think creatively about organizations you could join or activities you could take a part in that would, that would really uh, lift your spirits and, and give you ways to, uh, to recharge your batteries. So I have some ideas, and I want you to think about some ideas. Some of them are my own, and some of them are friends, uh, friends have shared with me. A very good friend of mine, her father had Parkinson's disease, and her mother was a brilliant seamstress. And she did a couple of things that really, I thought, were very, very clever. You know, with Parkinson's disease, the tremors are, can be very bad, and they really affect a person's ability to eat. They end up with food all over the front, and it, it really is a challenging situation. Well, my, father's, my friend's father was a very well-dressed gentleman. He was, in, a, in fact, a diplomat and worked at embassies across the world. And um, it was a very, very hard thing for him to accept and for him to deal with. So her mother came up with this idea. She was a great seamstress. And she loaned me this. This is very precious. She called them gubs, grown-up bibs. And she sewed them, and they were all different. Some had a, a tie in the front, some had a bow tie. Um, but then I saw another thing on, uh, on Pinterest, and it was a, just a towel, just a regular towel. A hole was cut out with some stretchy fabric so you could fit it over your head. But this is where the fun part is. The person made appliques. Some were Superman, some were Batman. One was kind of... Wonder Woman, rather well endowed. Um, but it was, it, they were characters and they were fun. But here's where, where the secret is. She made about 10 or 12 of these. And there were four in the family. And when they sat down for dinner, when they put the plates on the table, they put out the stack of gubs. Everyone wore one. And it was, oh, what are you going to wear tonight? Oh, I want the one with the tie. Oh, I want to wear the tuxedo. Or I'm Batman tonight, or whatever it was. And it became a family tradition. But it was a way for dad to have dignity. And it was a, day, a way for everyone to participate. And it was no big deal. And he wasn't embarrassed, and it wasn't uncomfortable. And now, this is a family heirloom that my friend really treasures. And I'm honored that she trusted me enough. I have to make sure I give this back to her. Um, but that, that she loaned this to me. So there's lots of different ways you can do that. Another thing, and I'm, I'm going to talk about this in, in my session next, my mother had um, one of the things, and I learned from Tipa this morning that, uh, that I didn't know, um, was the whole thing about muscle and hand coordination and losing the skill. And she would go to eat like this, and she had a terrible time. The cutlery in, in our home, stainless steel, fairly new, which meant it was big and it was heavy. And it was very hard for her to manipulate the knife and the fork and to eat. So I started to look around. And you know those good grips, the OXO, the, the ergonomic cutlery you can buy? I thought, oh, cool, good idea. They're pretty expensive. They're like 8 or $9 each. 
if you buy them at Target. Um, and I thought, yeah, but then if my son loads the dishwasher, they're going to be melted shortly. They'll be in the bottom rack. It's not going to end well. One day, I was lost in Ikea, which is a very easy thing to do if you've ever shopped in Ikea. It's, it's just a maze, and they do it intentionally. It's this huge, huge place. The good news is they have a website, and you can go to the website without having to go into the store because you have to commit to a lot of time if you go in Ikea. So one day I was looking around and I saw this big display of this plastic cutlery. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. But then I looked at it and it was in the children's section. I don't know if you can see it from where you are, but it looks very much like the OXO or the Good Grips cutlery. There's a little stop at the end of the spoon. It has a really interesting shape. It's lightweight and it's very manageable. Here's the best part a set of 18 for $1.99. I've had bad cups of coffee for more than $1.99, so I thought this was a good gamble and that I could buy these. Who knows, if it would work, great. If it didn't work, I was out $1.99. My mother loved them. She thought, I have to tell you, my kids love them. We still use them. And uh, they were a great solution, very inexpensive, colorful, looked good. No big deal, everybody used them, and it solved the problem, and it enabled my mom to spread her marmalade on her toast, to be able to pick up her fork without worrying about it falling or clattering to the floor, and it just, it was just a great solution that was, it was clever, it was creative, and it was cheap, my favorite combination of things. Another idea that I did, I did this, and this is one of my proudest moments. Do you know what an ebook is? Have you ever heard of, like blurb.com is, is what I used. When my mom was near the end of her life, she, uh, she really was confined to bed most of the time. And I, I sat with her in a room, and I had my laptop, and I was doing some work. But I thought, I need, I need to do something so that I don't lose my mind. And then I thought about this. I, I'm the only girl, and I have four brothers. And I was the keeper of all the family photos and all of the birth certificates and very precious heirlooms. I'm not a scrapbooking kind of a girl, okay? It just, it, it wasn't something that, that I was into and I didn't want to start investing in all the borders and the pages and the stickies and all that stuff. Plus, I'd end up with one book and then who would get it and how would I share it and then that was gonna be a problem. So I thought, what about if I took all of these great family pictures and organized it, had them scanned and made a digital book, and then my brothers could all get it, and then the grandchildren could all get it. So that's what I did. And there was a template. It didn't cost anything to create this book. It was free. You just load, upload uh, blurb.com is what it is. There's all different kinds of templates to choose from. But then I wrote a narrative of my parents' life and their immigration. The really wonderful thing is, this book is online. Anybody can look at this book for free. My cousins in Ireland read this book. And we realized that we had so many cousins that we didn't know each other. This was three years ago that I put together this book. A year and a half ago, one of my cousins said, you know what, we should, we should get together. We should have a family reunion. And I thought, how can you have a family reunion if you've never met? That's a, a, a semantic point. Anyway. What if we did something? So my cousin organized it. She booked a hotel in the, in the uh, town that my father's family was from in Wexford, Ireland. And this past May, my husband, my brothers, and their spouses traveled to Ireland, and 61 other Kellys got together, and we met. And I, I think it was inspired by this book. And I'm delighted about that. But now I have the best gift to give all my nieces and nephews for their wedding. I just order a copy of this book and give it to them. I'm done. Um, but it was, it was a wonderful way for me to honor my parents. And then instead of spending time with my mother watching her deteriorate in her bed, I was spending time looking at her as a vibrant young woman. I was focusing on her life as a young person and then as a young mother and all the things that my parents did. So this is something that, um, you, it, it took me a long time to do it, and then after she died, I found a lot of documents that I didn't know existed, and I went and redid it all, and uh, it's something that is a very positive thing to do. 
The only thing you pay for is when you actually order the printed copy of the book. But you can spend as long as you want putting it together, and it doesn't cost anything. So I think that's a, that's a great suggestion for you. So what I wanted to do now is to pair everybody up with a buddy. So I want you to find somebody that can be your buddy. And I've spent a lot of time talking about ideas that I've done. We're only, I think that there's a great brain trust in this room. There might be some creative ideas, things you're really proud of, ways that you found to be a positive, supportive caregiver, either, either ways that you have done to, to creatively care for someone else, or that you've found a way to creatively care for yourself, addressing any of those things. So raise your hand and point at your buddy right now. Everybody find a buddy. You got one? OK. And let's just take like three minutes and get together and just talk about what your best idea is. And then we may have an opportunity to report. OK? Go. OK, I think that uh, we may have solved some of the problems in the world just right now, just by all the, all the buzz and the activity. And I have to say, from up here, I saw so much very positive body language, people just being eager to share ideas. And, and that's a wonderful thing. So if you think about either an idea that you had or you heard from your partner or your little group, um, anybody have anything that you want to share that you think, that is smart. I like that. I want to do that. I want to steal that idea. Please. And I'll write it down. So what were some, some of the ideas that you heard? My partner has a great idea. Do tell. OK. So it was a chart with everyone's name on it? No, or a calendar? Totally oh, just personal. OK, not, not a public thing. OK. Yeah. Yes. And self-awareness, right? So compassion fatigue. And you did the, uh, did they think they were going to be sold at a yard sale, though, or anything like that? Because that would be awkward, you know? Compassion. Because I always worry about how do you price it properly? <laughs> you know? um, so then red, yellow, yeah, green stickers. 
Okay. That's a great idea. I love that. And self-monitoring, because then also people taking responsibility for recognizing their own situation rather than saying, well, why didn't you know that I was, you know, at the end of my rope, right? Yeah. Any other ideas? They don't have to be as colorful as that. It's okay. Yes? Yeah. Wow. That, yes. I mean, when you're that stressed, that the stressful thing is, where did I park my car? I have to eliminate one less stressor. So her, her suggestion was that she had so much, you had so much information overload, so much going on, so many multiple obligations, right, that she, the gift she gave herself was that when she went to the grocery store after work, she always parked in the very same spot. Didn't have to think about it. Didn't have to remember, oh, am I on this side? Because isn't it the worst when you go to a parking, a mall or a shopping center, and you think you're over here, and you got the cart, and you're all the way there, and you realize, ah, I parked over here, and you have to go all the way back with everything. So that's a great idea. So you simplified your life, and you systemized where you parked. OK, so systematic parking, let's call it that. How do we like that? OK, what else? Any other creative ideas? I have another one. So the same friend whose mom was a seamstress, so if you're not a seamstress, you have, you're totally absolved from worrying about this. But her dad loved to wear button-up dress shirts. That was his style. That's what he liked to wear. But with the Parkinson's, to button those front buttons was just a nightmare for him and for his wife to help him get dressed. And she wanted him to be as independent as long as she could. So here's what she did. She took all the buttons, sewed them onto the front placket of the shirt, and then took Velcro and sewed, or maybe even you could glue it, I don't know, Velcro on the inside of the shirt all the way up and did the same thing with his trousers. So when it was time to get dressed, all he had to do was do this, and he looked like he had a fully buttoned shirt. And he felt good about it. She certainly felt relieved, and dressing time went a lot smoother and a lot quicker. And uh, I thought it was a very creative solution. Any other ideas maybe you heard in the group? I'll wait. How about meal preparation? Any ideas for, uh, for foods that are healthy and that uh, the people in your care will actually eat? You know, that was one of the challenges um, with my mom is that she didn't like spicy food, which meant pizza even. <laughs> Anything that was uh, not, not really, uh, yeah, black pepper would be considered a high spice condiment. Um, but I found myself preparing a toddler meal every day, and I didn't have a toddler. You know, I had an 85-year-old who didn't have her own teeth and didn't like spicy food. So I always had to think about, okay, we're going to have tacos for dinner, or we're going to have pizza but I always had to make another meal, and that was a hard thing to do. So I had a, a little repertoire that I could pull out that I knew, and she didn't like pasta. You know? So um, it was challenging to, to, to keep it interesting and something that she would like and that wouldn't just exhaust me even more than I was. So keeping those ideas in reserve are a good thing to do. So when we... Uh, you say, well, you know, Brita, I'm just not that creative. I'm too tired to be creative, right? Oh, playgroups for moms. This is mine. Yeah, I call it my book club. <laughs> we haven't read a book in years. <laughs> so it's my fake book club, right? We just, it's an excuse to get together. And doesn't it sound so much better? Oh, I have to go to my book club. Yes, I'm in my book club. Where's your mom? Oh, she's at book club. Wow, she has time to read. That's impressive. <laughs> no. We read the menu at the bar. I think that's what we do now. But anyway. Um, <laughs> um, another thing that I wanted to share with you is um, I have a website. And on my website, there is a section called Idea Gallery. And that's what it is. It's a gallery of ideas. A lot of these ideas that I've spoken about with links directly, like there's a link 
to Ikea right to the cutlery page. So if you're interested in it and you know there's no business arrangement, it's just good ideas that I've uncovered that I want to make easier for people to access. So at the end, I'll be happy to share that with you. So this is a cover of, this was a snapshot actually that I took and I uploaded it to this website and they did all kinds of things and that ended up being the cover of this book. And the name of the book, I asked my husband, I said, I don't know what to call it, an immigrant's journey or you know, what should I do? And there, it, my mother had written down in uh, the very front of the book, I have it here, in her own handwriting, um, an Irish blessing. And it's very dear to me because it's in her own handwriting and it's on note paper from my dad's office. And uh, so he said, why don't you just call it an Irish blessing? And I said, sounds good to me. So I didn't agonize over it. But that's what's so wonderful about this is that if there was ever a disaster like me losing this book on this trip, <laughs> it's not a disaster because I could just order another one. And uh, it's, it's gone around, many, many people have enjoyed this book and even if you're not a good writer, if you, even if you don't think you can tell a story, um, you can enlist other family members to help you. The hardest thing for me about putting this together was to figure out how to organize it. And you know, if you have, like me, boxes and boxes of photos, you know, I, I call them my boxes of good intentions, what I did was I kind of chunked it up and I thought, okay, here's stuff about my dad which was pretty limited. He, they didn't have either because he, when he immigrated, he was one of nine siblings and they either didn't have baby pictures of him or they didn't give them to him or who knows where they are. But there weren't, there wasn't much to choose from. So I took all of the childhood stuff, the young stuff of my father and called it the Kellys. Then all the stuff, of my mother, the Burns, then I took pictures, they're kind of like a chapter, of my parents as a young couple in Ireland, how they got together. Then as a young married couple with my brothers in Ireland before they emigrated. Then the story of my dad coming to America. And it just kind of naturally unfolded the story of their lives. Then this was the hard part. When it came to me and my siblings, I had to be fair. I couldn't put in more pictures of my children than even though I was doing the book, you know, I felt. <laughs> but I have, I have four brothers, and um, I, I have to say I'm really proud of myself because one I was cranky with at the time, and I have to say I'm still cranky with him. But there's no note, you would never know it from reading this book. And there's, I didn't omit him, and I didn't leave anything out. Um, I felt that I needed to be fair. But each brother, each, each, each sibling got like five or six pages and then there are pictures of their children. But we're so consumed with pictures of our own kids and, and being excited about you know, the new members of the family. I didn't want it to be totally biased and um, it was not about them. This was about my parents and, and their journey. So it, it's, it's, a, 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 it's a great memoir, but it's not a very difficult thing to do. It just takes time and you just have to organize the pictures. And you can't put every picture that you have. You just got to pick your very best and, and find ways. So if you want to look at it afterwards, um, if you have white gloves, I will let you look at it. You're welcome to take a look at it. So let's see, where do we here now? The only way to have friends is to be one. That's what I was talking about earlier about support, about getting a group of friends, whether it's your fake book club whether it is a group of other caregivers, um, whoever it is, it's very isolating. And if you know someone who's caring for an aged parent, you know, I have to say that when I first went to meet with my friends after my mom passed away, I felt so guilty. I felt like I was on the leash, right, the caregiver leash. And at 4 o'clock, I was looking at my watch thinking, I need to get home, I, I need to get back, I can't be gone this long. And it took me a good six months to even stop thinking that way or feeling guilty. Like when they said a, a weekend out, who said to go for a weekend away? What a treat, you know, that was. But to, to spend overnight somewhere um, was something I hadn't done in so many years that it was very hard for me to do that. I was thrilled and grateful when I was able to do it. But it's an important thing to, uh, I, I learned a lesson that I should have reconnected with my friends sooner. I should not have 
held on so tightly to think that I was the only one who could care for my mother. So the only way to have friends is to be one. I found that to be true. So this is a, 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 just a screenshot from my website. And it's BritaMiller.com. But there are lots of different suggestions and ideas. Another one that I talk about in the next, uh, in the next program is about cool wheelchairs. Um, who would think that a wheelchair could be a fashion accessory? But my mother loved retail therapy. And TJ Maxx was her very, very favorite. So she, was, she had her walker. Her balance was really bad. And um, it would take forever you know, to get through the store. And I was worried that she was going to fall. And even though the seat was there, it just wasn't doing it, you know, as far as any kind of serious shopping time that, that, we, that we might want to do. I had to broach the idea of buying a wheelchair. And I didn't want her to feel um, diminished or feel that she was really not, not doing well. But I, I thought, how can I do this? And I realized I didn't know anything about wheelchairs. I didn't know anything about home health equipment. And I, I did some research, and I learned about transport chairs, which I'm sure you all know about, and that they were lightweight, and I could fold it, and I could put it in the back of the, tr of the, of the car. And I was so excited. I have to say this, though. I had a minivan at the time. I called it my mommy van. And I, there was a really short span of years when I went from folding strollers to uh, folding walkers and wheelchairs and putting it in the car. There was not a big gap there. Anyway, I found this wheelchair, and uh, I said, you know, Mom, what about this? Because then we could go to the Henry Ford Museum, or then we could go to the Institute of Arts or some places you might want to go, um, because you, know, you wouldn't be able to walk if we, if we just used your walker. And she said, yeah, that would be a good idea, that this would enable you to do all these things. And as I started looking through the websites, most of them were pretty ugly, or they were huge. And she was a very tiny woman. Um, it's another story about that. But I found one that was a plaid. And it was not unlike a Burberry plaid, which was her favorite. It was not, of course. But uh, and I said, Mom, what do you think about this? It's really snazzy. And she said, oh, I like that. <laughs> so I ordered it. And then I found a handbag that was similar. And so she had this little set, this little ensemble. Then I found a scarf, <laughs> and we were off to the races. We would go out, and people would stop her and say, that's a lovely wheelchair. <laughs> My mother would say, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> and she was so delighted with her wheelchair. And I was so delighted because I was able to get my shopping done. So it was a creative way to solve a problem of uh, just not being, not being able to get around or to be able to do all the things that I needed to do and not having the time and not feeling that I'm like, come on, come on, come on, <laughs> when she couldn't go any faster. And, and I certainly didn't want her to fall. So anyway, there is a, there's a, a, you can click on these links on my website, and it'll just take you right to some pages that, that will give you some ideas. So um, and here is the, uh, the image of the cutlery in case you're in the back and you couldn't see the little tiny ones here. Um, let's see. Is this the truth? <laughs> you mean to tell me there are people who don't know what Pinterest is? It's amazing. If you look up caregiver in Pinterest, there is stuff that will blow your mind. <laughs> there is a whole thing on adult bibs. There are patterns. There is one um, idea where you could take men's um, like a, a broadcloth button-down shirt, and you just cut around the neck, around the collar, and put a little edge around it, and then slip it over a person's head, and it looks like a button-up shirt. And it's, it's a really cool idea of an inexpensive way to, to make a bib that doesn't look uh, like a child's bib. And it's, it's just a, a nice way to be creative and solve a problem of laundry and mess and everything else so that people are not cranky. But Pinterest is a great resource. And um, just like anything, there's good ideas, bad ideas. Just look at If you say, well, I'm not creative. I can't think of all this stuff. You don't have to be. There's plenty of other people who are doing that for you, and they're having fun at it. So anybody here ever hear of speed dating? Yeah, we're not doing that today. But we are going to do speed problem solving, OK? And we're going to have the chance to spend um, just 10 minutes, right? You're going to speak to 10 people. I want you to think right now of one problem
that plagues you. It might be related to all of these different ideas, but a specific problem, like I can't get my mom to take a shower, or I have to find a way to get cooperation, whatever it might be, about a specific thing, or I have to find a way to get the car keys away from my dad, and I don't even know where to begin. Um, maybe another idea is we have to get mom to move out of her house and into this or to downsize. Or some plaguing idea that you have that if you had that solution to that one thing, that your life would be easier. So think about that right now. And then what we're going to do is I want everybody, we're going to stand up and you're going to find 10 different people. One at a time, you're going to say, so let's say that um, you have a pro Cindy has a problem here, and she's going to tell her problem to you. And then you're going to give her an idea. You're just going to say, you know what? I don't know what I would do, but here's an idea. Or I had that very same problem, and here's what I did. We're only going to take one minute to do this, so it's going to be really quick. And if you tell your, your, your problem is going to stay the same, but you might hear 10 different interpretations, 10 different ideas of how to solve your problem. Who knows? Maybe you'll find one or two great gems. A lot of good minds in this room. You might find nine or 10 really good ideas to solve your problem. So let's do that. Take everything, um, you know, make sure you got nothing in your hands. Stand up, please. Has everybody got an idea in their heads that a problem that plagues them that is their challenge? If you can't get up, somebody could come to you. I'm not opposed to that. Okay, so find your first person, and then I'm going to tell you when to switch. I got a, I got a stopwatch here, okay? So find your first person, right? And then we will be reporting afterwards because I want to be able to share these with you. Go. No, good, thank you. No, no, no. Okay, find another partner, please. Same problem, different partner. Go. Okay, can you find another partner? Same problem, let's switch it up. Get as many resources as you possibly can.
father-in-law looks at him. Okay, switch to another partner, please. Find somebody else. You can do it. Time to switch, find another partner. I hope you're getting lots of good ideas, because I expect a good report. Okay, in the interest of time, this will be your last, your last person. We wouldn't be able to do all ten. So when you have shared your idea and gotten a great response, go ahead and find your seat. If I can invite everyone to come back to their seats now. Okay, thank you very much. Let's see what we found out here. What did you think of that little exercise? Pretty good idea? Isn't it amazing? Because we're so isolated, in, we're often it's just ourselves and the person we care for, and you might be coming up with some great ideas nobody else knows about them. So who learned something that you would like to share with us that... Uh, you had a problem and somebody had an idea that you think you might try. Anybody? Oh, fine. Just keep all these good ideas to yourself. Fine. Be selfish. I don't care. Anybody learn anything or hear anything? Was it, if you heard problems that are challenging and you're going through them, was it good to hear other people saying similar things or did you hear lots of different ideas? I'm sorry? Different ideas, so different problems and challenges or different solutions? What, what would you say? Uh, both. both, yeah, yeah. And obviously, everybody has different levels of challenges and different levels of problems. But is there anything that, uh, that you heard from someone else in the, in the room today, or maybe something that I said earlier that you think, you know what, that's, that's an idea worth considering. I think I'm going to try that. What's your takeaway? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, and then as you go up, you know, like, soft, a little bit softer now, a little bit louder now, a little bit louder now, yeah, but right out of that, yeah. <laughs> Yes. 
Yeah. That's what you will do. And I, I think that's the secret, Gabriella, is that you think about what's going to work for you. It might not work for anybody else in this room, but what's going to work for you, and then you have it in your hip pocket. It's, one of your tool, it's in your toolbox. It's a resource. It may not work every time. It won't work every time. But just the knowledge that you have that and you have an idea, I think, can be helpful. So I, I really hope that works for you. There you go. There you go. And just by act of, the act of praying for them could give you some grace. I think you'd, you'd get some points there. Yeah. Anybody else? Any other ideas? Did you think that that, well, do you think this was a worthwhile session? Did you learn anything? Did you find it um, a little bit about your perspective or being creative? And not to put pressure on yourself to say, I'm not a creative person. I can't do, I'm too tired. So that's really, to rewind a little bit, that's what, what I was trying to share with you, that it, is, it takes brain cells, it takes energy to be creative and to think of solutions, particularly when you're in the moment and you're dealing with a really difficult and challenging situation, like an argument that you don't want to escalate. But if you are well rested and taking care of yourself, you're gonna have a much better chance of being creative. And then think of all the resources that are around you, your friends, coworkers, the internet, um, for good and for bad, and you just have to be selective about what you want to use and what's going to work for you. So thank you so much for all of your attention. At the end, if you want me to, uh, to, to share this information, um, I'm happy to send it off to you if you want to fill out your, your email address on this piece. Um, I'll be happy to do that. And if you have any questions, I'm here to answer them as well. And I hope to see you for the keynote that was going to start in about, what, 15 minutes? Something like that. Okay. Thank you very much.